I do. Excellent. Hey, welcome back. Great turnout today. I am honored to be in your presence and the fact that you would bring your own personal attraction power and combine it with this group is very meaningful to me. Um, you know, at the bottom of, let's take all the spiritual books, all the scriptures, all the dogma, let's take all of it and put it in a gigantic cosmic pressure cooker. Let's put it down a black hole and distill it down to its very essence. Um, you know, three words, God is love and love is God. And that answers so many questions for me because there are so many questions. One of the questions we've been looking at this week is God reeling us back in because we're all extensions, children, uh, sparks of the divine. And we've all been living our own life adventures. We've all wandered off in different directions, made different decisions, uh, different choices and developed different karmas or different realities. And because of that, each and every one has a different path back. This is why there are so many spiritual principles and practices. God love source has arranged a virtually infinite number of ways back for his virtually infinite number of individualizations of self who've wandered off into the universe to play the game of forgetting, forgetting who we really are. And so in yoga, again, the great disease that causes all other disease is avidya, which is forgetfulness. So we all forget our divine nature. We wander into calamity. And there's something about pain that has a remarkable ability to turn us back on course. But then I, here's a question for you. And the question is, once we do make this internal shift from the outer to the inner, and we realize that self-realization is the only thing that's ever really going to do it for us, how much is our own effort and how much is the mercy and the grace of God love source, the infinite, the divine of which we're all one. And that is that is up for debate. I mean, I simply find it impossible to believe that we achieve self-realization, our God consciousness. We achieve our union with God without some effort on our part, without some shift in consciousness, without an honesty and an openness and a willingness, without a deep turning of our soul from from the false to the true. Now, the question is, how much is our own effort and how much is mercy and grace? Well, many great yogis have discussed that, but I believe a great milestone in the life of every soul is when, as we're wandering through the abyss of time and space, seeking all the joys and pleasures, seeking pain or seeking pleasure and avoiding pain, maybe sometimes seeking pain, but in all those wanderings, there's a shift in every single soul that's a milestone, and it's the milestone from seeking the outer world to seeking the inner world. It's that point where with enough years and lifetime or enough lifetimes that you've simply you've had your sex, you've had your money, you've had your prestige, you've had your reputation, you've had your career, you've had your kids, you've had your stuff, you had your yacht. You've also had the lack of all that. You've had the lack of the kids. You had your lack of sex. You had your lack of money. You had your lack of prestige. You had your lack of admiration. You've bounced back and forth between having it and not having it. And there's this point where the, the game is exposed and we realize all those are simply reflections of a love that's so much greater that, you know, how many ice cream cones can you have? you know, before there's this realization that it's all just representative. It's all symbolic of an internal, great cosmic love that nothing else will do. And when we've made that shift, we still live in the world. And we certainly enjoy the blessings that we have. But we know that as long as we keep our focus in po pointed internally toward the great good, that it will unfold and will the amount of time and space we'll have to suffer through before we get back to our true nature will unfold. And with that in mind today, I, this great yogi came to my mind. His name is Sri Nisgaradatta Maharaj. His quotes are mind blowing. I'm just going to today. I'm going to conclude with some quick readings from Sri Nisgaradatta Maharaj, one of the great yogis of the 20th century. 
he lived on a street corner in Benares in India and he sold cigarettes. So you can do that if you're a sage. He says, here's just a few. All you want to be is happy. All your desires, whatever they may be, are longing for happiness. Basically, you wish yourself well. Desire by itself is not wrong. It is life itself, the urge to grow in knowledge and experience. It is choices you make that are wrong. To imagine that some little thing, food, sex, power, fame, will make you happy is to deceive oneself. Only something as vast and deep as your real self can make you truly and lastingly happy. Couple more, the mind creates the abyss, the heart crosses it. The consciousness in you and the consciousness in me, apparently too, is really one. Seek unity and that is, that is love. One more, love is not selective, desire is selective. In love there are no strangers. When the center of selfishness is no longer, all desires for pleasure and fear of pain cease. One is no longer interested in being happy. Beyond happiness, there is pure intensity, inexhaustible energy, the ecstasy of being and giving from a perennial source. <laughs> okay. I love you. Have a beautiful day. Remember who you are.